بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم let us continue our discussion of uh, the application of Gauss law on spherical uh, symmetry uh, we will uh, extend our discussion to include thin spherical shell so this is very thin uh, uh, sphere uh, spherical shell like the ping pong you, you know the ping pong uh, ball small ball it has a small uh, 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 thickness so it's very thin and at the same time it is a sphere so inside it is vacant so we have vacancy and the material is only concentrated in a very small uh, uh, thickness and we can consider that it has only one one radius okay so it has a radius it has a radius r okay because it is very thin if it is thick here we consider thick spherical uh, shell so it will have inner radius and outer radius here is very thin so we'll think of only one uh, one radius what is the electric field outside at any point outside here so this is point outside if this is positively charged and my son you notice that there is no difference between a conductor or uh, insulator in this case because it's very thin so all the charges are th are sitting or located on this very thin uh, surface uh, which is the outer surface inside there is no material and there is no charge as well Okay, <clears throat> if it is positively charged, the electric field will be radially outward, okay, and it's coming outward. If it is negatively charged, it will be radially inward. So at this point, we'll draw our Gaussian uh, surface, and we will end up with uh, integral E dot uh, dA equals Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. I think now it is very easy, as we have done before, that the electric field outside will be equal to K, uh, the total charge divided by R square, where this is the distance uh, R uh, from the center of the spherical, uh, spherical shell. Okay, so outside, the electric field is KQ over R square, the total charge, because inside my Gaussian surface, the charge is the total charge, which is uh, capital Q. Okay, let us now try to ask ourselves what is the electric field anywhere inside uh, this spherical shell? Maybe at point here. Let me use another uh, color, which is the black color here at this point. Okay, we draw our Gaussian surface. Should be concentric with the large or the real uh, surface. If you look inside this Gaussian surface, you will find that the Q enclosed inside this will be equal to zero, okay? So E equal zero because a Q enclosed is equal to, is equal to zero, <clears throat> okay? I didn't repeat uh, the integration, electric field is uniform here in this case, and what is the area, etc. And we ended up with E equals KQ over R square. Here, the uh, Q enclosed is equal to zero, as a result, E will be zero. If this is zero, so E will be equal to zero. Let us discuss now the thick spherical conducting shell. So, like the ball, but now uh, it has a certain thickness, and it has inner radius, Rn, and it has R out. It is conducting, in this case, and we put extra charge, which is plus Q. So here we have a cavity, cavity which is vacant. It doesn't have any... Uh, material just empty space this is my material thick conducting material and it is a spherical uh, shell it has inner radius and outer outer radius let us discuss two cases there is no charge in the cavity the cavity there is no charge and the second case will be there is a charge inside the cavity okay these are the two cases for the thick spherical conducting conducting shell now for finding the electric field at any r which is smaller than the inner radius meaning that here maybe here 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 this is the place located inside the cavity where r from the center is smaller than the inner the inner radius of course the electric field will be equal to zero why the electric field is equal to zero my son i think it is very clear that if you draw if you draw Gaussian surface and you look inside, how much is the Q enclosed? 
you will find that there is no Q enclosed, and the Q enclosed is equal to zero, and as a result, uh, electric field will be equal to zero. So Q enclosed equal, equal zero, okay? And this is the reason why the electric field will be equal to zero. For any point which is between R inner and R outer, maybe this point here, we draw the Gaussian surface, okay? And you still, you look inside, how much is the Q enclosed? Q enclosed is equal to zero. As a result, we will write that E is equal to zero also. So E is zero here in the cavity, and E is zero inside the conductor between the inner radius and the outer radius. <clears throat> if we would like to find what is the electric field outside here at this point P, let us call it point P outside, where R is greater than R out. So you go here, and this is your R, and R in this case will be greater than R out. What will be the electric field? As we have done several times now, okay, it will be the same as this one, as the previous cases, uh, electric field will be KQ over R square. KQ over R square, which is uh, the logical result from the shell theorem. All the charges in the spherical symmetry will act as if all of them are located at the center. So all of this plus Q is located at the center. When we look from outside, the electric field will be K, the total charge of R squared. This is the magnitude of it. The direction will be radially outward if Q is positive, radially inward if the charge is negative. Let us take the last uh, case for spherical symmetry where we have thick conducting spherical shell, the same as before, but now the cavity has a charge inside, okay? So let me start from beginning. This is my thick conducting spherical shell. There is no charge, okay? Then we bring a positive charge and place it on the outer surface, plus capital Q. And this plus capital Q will be uh, distributed all over the outer surface, uh, not on the inner surface. Okay? As Dr. Mackey said at the beginning of this chapter, that the charges will be sitting on the outer surface of a certain conductor. Then, by certain method, we uh, embed a certain charge at the center here, which is plus small q. Okay, this plus Q inside the cavity. Here we have empty space. Okay, at the center I place plus Q. Okay, this is the conducting material. What will happen to the inner surface? Here, this is a plus Q. There will be electric field radially outward. And this positive charge will in induce opposite charge of the same magnitude on the inner surface. So here we have plus Q it will induce minus Q on the inner surface. But this minus Q came from where? Here we'll have minus Q sitting here on this inner, inner surface. We have minus, minus Q distributed on the inner surface. From where we got this minus Q? So this is minus, minus Q sitting on the inner surface, distributed uniformly. From where did it come? It came from the outer surface. Of course, and the outer surface has lost this uh, Q, small Q. So, meaning that we will end up with plus Q on the outer on the outer surface. Okay. Let me do it. If we have another uh, negative charge, we put here plus capital Q. Just for completeness, my son, I would like to expose you to. A different situation. I, I put plus Q on the outer surface, okay? It is thick conducting spherical shell, and at the center I place minus, minus Q. I place minus Q here at the center. This minus Q will induce a positive charge here, meaning that negative charges will escape from this surface. So here we'll have plus Q. But these negative charges which escaped from this surface, leaving it with plus small q, has went there on the outer surface, okay? So minus q 
at the center of the cavity will induce plus small q on the inner surface, okay, and minus q will go to the outer surface. If you have a small plus q at the center, it will induce minus small q on the inner surface, and on the outer surface will be plus, uh, plus q. Now, let us uh, try to find how much is the electric field inside the cavity at points uh, 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 where R is smaller than Rn inside the cavity and inside the material, the conducting material itself and outside the conducting material. What will be the electric field in all cases? <clears throat> okay, the electric field for R is smaller than Rn. Let me uh, choose this is my R here and I want to find how much is the electric field here. Of course, it will be radially outward, okay? And if I draw the Gaussian surface, how much is the Q enclosed inside my Gaussian surface? If you look at this very small Gaussian surface, the charge inside is plus small Q. So the electric field will be uh, K, this small Q divided by R squared. And this is the R, which is the radius of this small uh, uh, Gaussian surface and it is smaller than Rn inside the cavity, okay? What about the electric field inside the conducting material itself? Okay, somewhere here. So I draw my Gaussian surface, okay? And you look inside, how much is the Q enclosed? If you look inside this, you will notice that we have plus Q and we have minus Q. So the Enclosed, the charge is equal to is equal to zero. So, a Q enclosed inside my Gaussian surface for this uh, region. This is my R now. Okay, uh, equal to zero. So this implies that the electric field is equal to zero. And this is logically, yeah, Shabab. I think we have repeated this several times now that the electric field inside the conductor itself in electrostatic equilibrium is equal to is equal to zero. So this is logical and expected result. What about the electric field anywhere outside here at this point? Uh, we'll draw the Gaussian surface and look inside and we have repeated this several times and we said that the electric field will be KQ which is inside divided by R squared and R will be this is my R in this case. Okay, so Q enclosed Q enclosed in my Gaussian surface here. Look inside my sun. We have on the outer surface, we, has, we have plus capital Q plus small Q minus small Q plus small Q. So these will cancel out and I am left with this much only. It will be plus capital Q plus the small Q. As a result, the electric field by the application of the Gauss law, we will get that it will be K capital Q plus small Q divided by R square, and this is the electric field outside. This is the magnitude of the electric field outside. What will be its direction, my son? If the, of this total charge is positive, it will be radially outward. So at this point, the electric field will be outward. If the, so this is the radial direction. If this is positive quantity. If it is negative quantity, the electric field will have the same magnitude, but it will be radially in word. I think with these several examples, everybody should respect Gauss law and it works really very powerful with uh, spherical symmetry, uh, planar symmetry. In the next video, inshallah, we will apply it with the cylindrical symmetry. Best wishes.